Hey, it's Ray the Video Guy here, and today I'm gonna share with you something you can use in Photoshop to start getting even better designs. I'm talking about using gradients. So one tool inside of Photoshop that can be used in a variety of different ways and really add some great depth to your imagery are gradients. And gradients are where you go from one color to another color or possibly even to multiple colors in a nice soft ramp. And what I mean by that is, for instance, right here, we've got a top color and a bottom color of dark blue and light blue. And so if we choose the gradient tool here, which is opened up by the letter G or by clicking the tool here, you can come in and you can create a gradient. So if I start here and I drag to this corner, we're gonna see that we get a nice gradient from dark blue to light blue across that image. And if we do it this way, then we can have that gradient go the opposite way. We can have it go straight across. We can have it go up and down or any other way that we'd like. In addition, depending upon how long our line is, we can determine how gradual that gradient truly is. If we were to make it very short, you'll see that it's gonna go from light to dark very, very quickly, which can be very useful for creating things like chrome effects inside of your imagery. Now, the great thing about this is, as I said, there's a lot of different ways that we can use gradients. And if we come up to the gradient tool up here, you'll see that we can choose from built-in gradients. So for instance, if we wanted that chrome effect I mentioned, we can click on the built-in gradient for the chrome effect, and we can just drag that, and you'll see we get this nice chrome effect, okay? And it just goes from one layer to the next here, and if we keep that straight, then we can get a nice chrome effect on there. Okay. And next to this, you'll see that we also have a variety of different ways that the gradients can be used. They can be used linearly, like we have now. We also have a radial tool. We have an angle tool. We got a reflective tool and we've got a diamond tool, okay? So the way those work is very simply, we click on the one that we want. So for instance, the radial one, and you'll see why it's called that, because if we drag like this, you'll see it pulls it out in a circle. This can add some really cool effects when you're creating. This next one is called the angle, and you'll see it works a little bit different than the radial in that it kind of does this weird line effect, but it kind of stops and starts there. We also have the reflective one, which can be very useful because it's going to take your gradients and go twice. So it's, you can see it goes out this way and it goes out in a reflected way in this direction. The final one is the diamond tool and you'll see that when we drag that, it creates this diamond effect with our gradient. So you can see there's a lot of different types of gradients that we can create directly on a background here using that tool. Now we can take this a whole lot further if we go into things like outlines and fills and backgrounds and you can really start to make some cool stuff here. So if we go back to just having a blank background. So I'm just gonna create a new one here. We'll get rid of this. So if we were to start over here, and this time we were to put in, let's say, oh, let's create a, a square in here or a rectangle, okay? So now we've got a rectangle that we can use and we can add the gradients to just that rectangle. And there's a few different ways we can do that as well. One of the easiest ways to do that is I'm actually gonna hold the command or control key if you're on a PC, and I'm gonna click on this layer right here, and you can kind of see, it might be difficult to see, but we've actually got the box selected, and we've got the little outline moving around there that we probably can't see on that background. So now, if we were to use the gradient tool, it's gonna do the gradient, but only inside of this box. Even if we start outside the box, you'll see that it's only gonna fill inside that box, okay? And this can be used on any type of object, any type of shape, even inside of text if we wanted to. So if we wanted to put in some text in here, let's grab the text tool, and I'm just gonna put in hello, and we're going to resize that text so it's nice and big so we can see it, just like so. Okay, and so in the case of our text here, we're gonna do things a little bit differently because you'll notice that when we have text or we have something that is a vector graphic, we're not gonna be able to use our gradient tool in the same way. You'll see it has the little no symbol there. So we have to do this in one of a couple of different ways. One, we can create a new layer, and this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our layers palette, we're gonna hold down the option or the alt key, and we're going to click in between the text layer and the layer above it. And you'll see there's a little drop down arrow that shows up there. And we do that, you'll see that our top layer is gonna indent over the word hello. And so now if we go into that layer, we can now use our gradient tool and we could make a nice chrome effect 
on our text, just like so. Actually, let's switch out of the diamond to here and do that one more time. And boom. And so there we now have a chrome effect. Now, that's one way to do it. And I'm going to delete that out here because I want to show you another way that we can create these same types of effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this layer and away from the word hello, we're going to click on the blank area twice. And that's going to bring up our layer styles palette. Now in here, you can do all sorts of different things like add drop shadows and glows and all that. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a gradient overlay. So I'm going to click on that here. And you'll see we've got a gradient that's in here. And you can see now our hello is starts off light and then gets dark. But what we want to do is we're going to take our chrome effect again. And you'll see it adds our chrome effect to this. But of course, we want this to be up and down, not um, you know gradiating sideways. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this clock tool here. I'm going to bring this down just like so to 90 degrees. And there, once again, we have our effect. Now, the, the great thing about this is this is something that is non-destructive. In other words, we can come back, even if we say, okay, we've got our layer, we can come back in here and we can change that still. We can still go to our gradient overlay and we can decide to change that to something else. Okay. So it's never a permanent thing unless we make it a permanent thing. Otherwise, we can come in and we can make any changes that we want. So now to take these gradients even further, what we're going to do is we're going to have some fun with this. So I'm going to go back to our uh, Chrome effect for now. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to create a stroke on this to help make that stand out. Now, you'll notice here in the stroke, right now we've got it set to gradient. Normally, when you create a stroke, it's probably going to be a solid color. And you can come in here and we can change this to make it stand out by putting different colors on here, uh, white or black. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hit OK for a minute and I'm going to go back to what we had a minute ago, which is a gradient. Okay. And this gradient right now goes from dark to light. And you can see the dark line around here and then the light line around here. Well, one of the things that we could do is we can actually choose the same chrome gradient, just like so. And in this case here, what we're going to do is you can see it's at reflected, but what we're going to do is we're going to put it at linear. And now you can see we've got our outline around here, but it's exactly the opposite. OK, now if yours is the same, all you have to do is hit reverse and that's going to flip it around. But the way that we drew our gradient, we drew it that direction. So reverse actually puts it the same. But if we leave it this way, you can see up here we've got the gold color and down here we've got the blue color. And that just adds a really nice effect to this because it kind of reverses what's going on there. Now, on top of that, to make it stand out, you can, of course, do things like add a shadow to that. And it really starts to give it a nice three dimensional effect. And so you can start to really build a very cool effect using gradients. Now, so far with our gradient effects, we've used built in gradients that we have inside of our gradient tool. However, you don't always have to use the ones that are built in. You can create your own gradients. And so, for instance, if I was to click on the actual gradient area here, you'll see that the gradient editor pops up here. And now we can choose any of the gradients that we have in here and we can modify them to create our own gradients that we want to use. So for instance, right here, we got a lot of really neat silvery looking gradients here. And you'll see this is what it looks like. It's got lots of different choices in there. And we can come in and we can edit any of these points simply by clicking on the little chiclet there and then coming in and choosing the color. So if we wanted to suddenly add a weird splash of red in there, we can do that. And you can see that showing up here, okay? And any changes that we make. So we can start to make a lot of differences to our gradients. And all we'd have to do is hit OK. And then we could come over here and maybe this one needs to be uh, blue for some reason. And so we can really start to create our own gradients that stand out specifically for whatever it is that we need to use them for. Now, you'll notice here that we've got a few different things. We've got a button here for each of the colors that are in the gradient. And when we click on these, we can come in and we can choose the color that we want by picking it from here. You'll also notice that up at the top, we have two other buttons. Now this here, when we click on this, you'll notice that our color is now ghosted out, but we have the ability to choose the opacity of that particular uh, part of the gradient. Now this comes in handy, not so much for a gradient that's as complex as this, but if we go back to something simple like this one here, this has a blue gradient going down to transparent, which is why we see this pattern here, because that means it's transparent. And if we were, and you'll notice that this one here is black, which means that it's completely opaque. 
And this one here is at zero and is white. So anything that's white is going to be more transparent. Anything that's black is going to be less transparent. So if we wanted to make it semi-transparent on the end here, we would click on this and we could bring it up to something like 50%, 55%. And you'll notice now this box is a grayish color because gray means it's partially transparent. Now you'll also notice that when we choose one of these boxes here, that we have a little diamond in the center there. This literally tells us where the center of our gradient is. And if we were to pull this this way, you'll notice that we see more of the uh, opaque blue here. And if we drag it this way, we'll see more of the transparent and it's going to go from um, solid to transparent a lot more quickly. Traditionally, this is gonna be right in the center. The same goes for our actual colors. So for instance, if we chose this color here, where we got the orange and the blue, this is going to choose the center of that gradient from blue to orange. And if we move that once again, you'll see that it's more blue and then quickly turns to orange or vice versa. If we have a more complex one such as this, you'll see that we actually have those in each of the locations in between so that we can adjust them based on that particular point. And you'll notice that between the red and the green, we can change it here, but it does not affect the others. The same for if we click here, we can do the same thing. And if we click to this one, we can do the same thing here. And that just allows us to choose how gradually our gradients change. On any of these, if you wanna create your own, so for instance, we've got yellow to blue to red to green, well, maybe we wanna add something else in here. So we could actually bring this over here and we could drag this over here and we could add a new one by clicking right here and that's gonna make a new chiclet there. It's gonna to default to that same color as before that we had, but now we can hit color and we could decide that we need to have a light blue that we don't have in there. And so now we've got an extra color in here and again, we can move this around. We can also choose how quickly it changes just like we did with the others. And you can add as many of these colors as you want. And you can always cut back on the colors by choosing one and hitting delete. And that's how you can create your own gradients. And by the way, this works not only inside of the layers palette, but you can do the same thing inside of the gradient palette up here where you can add in your gradients. You can also load gradients by coming in here and hitting import gradients. In fact, we actually have a huge selection of gradients that we've got linked in the description down below this video. So head down there and click that link. You'll be able to download thousands of gradients. And then when you wanna add them, all you do is hit import gradients. And you're gonna choose one of the gradients from the PS Gradient Super Pack. And so for instance, uh, I'm gonna choose this Mac OS one here. And I'm gonna hit open. And you see, once we do that, it's gonna actually show up down here. And now we've got those gradients available to us that we can add in, just like so. Hey, it's Ray again, and thank you for watching this Photoshop Tips video. If you're looking to improve your Photoshop skills, well, we've got a free course that you can jump into right now at raiselinks.com slash PS training. There's a link down below in the description. We also have some free giveaways down in the description as well. So be sure to click down there to be able to pick those up as well. And we'll see you in the next video.